G'day cobbers, <laughs> welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockyard Small Driving, we're checking out the King's Mark II version of the lithium iron phosphate 120 amp hour battery. That was a mouthful. <laughs> we'll be doing a low load discharge, a medium load discharge, and a maximum load discharge. And after that, if it survives, we'll be pulling it apart. So let's get into it. First up, the five amp hour discharge. Now the five amp discharge test was designed to replicate something like a fridge operating in the background, maybe a couple of LED lights, maybe even charging your mobile phone. On the left hand side here you can see the voltage in volts and amperage as well, ranging from zero right through to 16. And along the bottom here we've got the time in hours. And the various tests, one, two and three. We'll get into that while we did three tests later on. First test, okay, so you can see the amperage right from the start to the very end a consistent five amps, and that's consistent amongst the three tests. Only the voltage changes. So you can see here that the voltage remains very, very consistent right from the beginning, almost, about 95%, right through to about this point here, which is about the 10% mark. The reason it's great is because if you have resistive loads, it's something like a, a travel buddy, or maybe a road chef, the voltage you're putting into that resistive load is very, very consistent, and that's great except when you're trying to assess the state of charge of your battery. You can't do it with a conventional voltage meter like you could a lead acid because they drop off consistently more or less like that. What you have to use is a shunt and a shunt measures the amount of current going in or going out and will tell you exactly how much capacity your battery has left. Okay, and this battery <laughs> at five amps of discharge load gave us 136.278 amp hours of capacity. And uh, that's where I was thinking, well, I've obviously stuffed something up. So I did the second test. <laughs> and the second test right, gave us 137.010 amp hours of capacity. So again, very, very similar. So I was having more confidence in this test now. And the third test, well, again, very, very similar. And it gave us 136.8 amp hours. So very consistent amongst the three tests. So we know this is reliable data. And that gave us an average of nearly 137 amp hours. And that, my friends, is nearly 14% over the 120 amp hour rating. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's move on. Now, the keen eyed amongst you will have noticed I ran that test three times. And that's not only for accuracy, it's for my own peace of mind. Because the first one I thought, oh no, I've obviously buggered something up. It couldn't be nearly 14% over its rated capacity of 120 amp hours, nearly 137 amp hours. By the second one with almost identical results, I thought, well, uh, maybe it is. And by the third one, I was confident. At five amps of load, nearly 137 amp hours out of this puppy at five amps. <laughs> it's not bad, eh? Nearly 14%. Okay, but it is rated at 40 amps of load. They rated 120 amp hour at 40 amps of load. Now, if I plug my 500 watt halogen into an inverter, it gets me at 45 amps of load, which is very close. So let's check out the results for that. Now for the 40 amp discharge test. And as I said before, we use that 500 watt halogen light through the Renology 3000 watt inverter, and it was using about 45 amps, so pretty close. Okay, on the left hand side here, we've got the voltage and amperage ranging from zero right through to 50, and again, the three tests to make sure we get consistent and accurate data. The first test, now as you can see here, the voltage very similar to the last one, very consistent right throughout and drops off at the very end. And we're about 45 amps, almost from beginning to the very end with our discharge of amperage. What did it net us on that Victron shunt? Well, it netted us 131.88 amp hours on that first test. What about the second test? Let's have a look at the plots first. And again, it's very, very, very similar. So we're expecting a very similar result. And it was, it was 131.93 amp hours within spitting distance of our first result. So that's a good sign, it means we're getting consistent data. And the third test, again, check out the plots, very, very similar, both voltage and amperage. And our result, well, that was 131.89 amp hours. Again, very, very consistent, very, very similar, which leads me with confidence about our results here. Now our average was 131.9 amp hours. And that, that is 9.9% or nearly 10% over the 120 amp hour rating. Absolutely fantastic. But we've still got the acid test, the 120 amp discharge test coming up. Well, so far I must say I'm pretty impressed. Around 132 amp hour, that's nearly 10% over its rated capacity of 120 amp hour 
with 45 amps of load, full to completely flat. Not bad. Well, as I say in the song lyric, the only way is up, baby. Let's do it at its maximum rated current of 120 amp hour. Let's check out the results. Okay, I'll quickly run you through the setup here. So we've got the power supply down there and it's charging to 14.6 volts. And as you can see, it's fully charged. So I'll turn that one off and disconnect the negative there. And this is my testing cell. So I've got a Victron shunt here and just a positive mega 300 amp there. By the way, that's uh, that cable there, that is 120 millimeters to handle the load. All right, we're moving on to the Renogy 3000 watt inverter there. And we're running a couple of lights and a hairdryer off that one. And as you can see, we're sitting at about 14.6 volts there. So I'll turn it on and I'll see how many amps we'll be sucking down for this test. There we go, we're at about 120 amps as you can see on the screen there. So we'll see how long it lasts. Now the results of the acid test you've all been waiting for, the 120 amp discharge of the 120 amp hour battery. Just like before on the long left hand side here, we got the voltage and amperage range from zero right through to 140. And along the bottom here is the time and hours. Let's check out the plot. Now the voltage plot along the bottom here, you can see very consistent right throughout, which is great and slightly drops off right at the end. However, our amperage has started sneaking up throughout the test. We started off at around about 120 and by the end of the test, I think we're at about 138. And that's a combination of a 500 watt halogen light and the GLW's hair dryer. Surprisingly, I had to borrow that because I don't own one myself. Strange that. <laughs> but what net result did we get? Well, we got 128.12 amp hours. Absolutely fantastic. Now, it was getting pretty warm, so I grabbed out my floor camera and I took a couple of photographs and I'll throw them up now. So this is the shunt. This is what's doing the measuring. The shunt is actually this bit here in the negative line and the positive line here, that's where your fuse is. That's a 300 amp mega fuse and a Victron 500 amp shunt. Now it's connected to 120 millimeter cable. So it's pretty thick cable. That's cross-sectional area, of course. So it didn't get too warm. After an hour of abuse at in excess of 120 amps, we only got up to 37.4 degrees Celsius. But what about the battery? Firstly, we'll have a look at the top of the battery. So this is along the top here. And as you can see, the cables were a little bit warm, but we started to get a little bit of heat here, as you can see. So I took a picture of the side of the battery and uh, this is the bit which was getting hot to touch, physically hot to touch. And it was 57.8 degrees Celsius. And I'm pretty sure that's where the BMS is located. I don't think I have to have too much of a guess at that. It was reasonably hot to touch on that side of the battery. So when we do the disassembly, we'll see if we've melted anything. <laughs> now our 128.12 amp hour capacity, well, that's still nearly 7% over the 120 amp hour rated capacity of the battery. Absolutely fantastic. I'm pretty impressed with that, I must say. So it turns out the label on the front isn't lying. It will happily maintain its maximum rated current of 120 amps from completely full to completely empty. And the astute amongst you will have noticed by the end of the test, it was about 130 amps I was drawing out of this puppy. And it did get a bit warm. Now, as I said before, once the test was completed, it wouldn't actually accept a charge, which is not unusual, but 10 minutes of cooling down time, as you saw, it was pretty hot in those flare images, while well, it started to accept a charge. So, as far as performance is concerned, it passed those tests. What about the disassembly? So as this video is already getting pretty long, I've decided to break it into a two-parter. The first part, you've already watched, obviously, the performance testing, which it passed with flying colours. The second part will be the disassembly. But not only disassembly, we'll be testing the all-important temperature protection of the BMS, the battery management system, because as you probably already know, if you try and charge one of these batteries below zero degrees Celsius, if the battery management system doesn't cut in and stop you from doing that, well, <laughs> you're going to kill the cells in the battery, which essentially means you rubbish the battery. So stick around for that one. Ring that bell icon. Now guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.